Hey, this is Mr. Hendrickson, and this is your Force Table Vectors Pre-Lab. You're going to start by first connecting all three strings to the corresponding color spring scale on each side of the table. So in other words, there should be a blue, yellow, and green sticker on each end of the rope, and make sure that end of the rope is connected to the corresponding color spring scale. Once you get your scales hooked up, you'll slide a piece of notebook paper underneath the actual strings. And what you're going to do is you're going to place two points under each line. And once you have those two points, you'll eventually be able to use them to connect to find out the exact position of the lines for those three strings. So again, my second line, I put a point here and here. My third line, I put a point here and here. In addition to doing so, you're going to need to look over here on your actual spring scales to get a reading. Once you get that reading, make sure you draw it next to the points for each of the three strings. Once you've done that, you'll actually connect the two points with a straight line. You'll notice that all three lines will meet somewhere in the center. Again, make sure you've labeled all three lines with the forces that are represented by those three lines. Once the lines are drawn in, make sure you take a protractor and correctly measure all three angles. Take a second and think, what would you expect all three of these angles to add up to? If we add all three of those angles together, what exactly would we get? To correctly interpret the scale, you need to know what the markings on the scale represent. The little markings are what we call graduations. In order to read the graduations, all you need to do is count the number of graduations between two marked locations. What I mean by this is that if you take and you start at one location, so let's say we start at zero, and then we, all we do is we count the number of lines. So I count one, two, three, four, five lines. By going up by five lines, that's equivalent to two newtons of force. So now if I just write this as a ratio for two newtons of force, we have five lines. This reduces down to 0 0.4 newtons for every one line. Therefore, each line of graduation is worth 0.4 newtons. Okay, so let's try a quick example. Something's pulling on our spring scale. Maybe we've hung a weight. Maybe we've attached to the, the spring scale to something and we're pulling on it. It doesn't really matter. All that matters is that we read the tool correctly. So let's zoom in for a closer look. Now, when you're reading the tool, which end of the little plunger you read matters. And so it's this little pointy end here that you want. All right, we can see here that we're at 8 newtons. And you can see that there's another line of graduation that we pass, so that would be 8.4 newtons. But we're not quite yet at the following line, which would be 8.8 .8 newtons. So these are the limits to our precision. So following the rules for measuring with significant figures, it's in between these two values that we have to make our estimation. So again, if this is 8.4 and this is 8.8, .8, to me it looks like we're a little bit above the 8.4. So I would make the estimate that the spring scale reads 8.5 newtons. And there we go, we've read the tool. So once you have your paper laid out underneath your strings, you're going to take a look at your strings and gently line up two points underneath each string. Those two points, once connected, will give you your vectors representing the force in those springs. After you line up the points, check each spring scale and carefully record the force in newtons along each set of points. You're going to need these forces later when you use your scale to convert those forces to centimeters on your large paper. Once you've found your points and your force readings, you can take the strings off the scale and you'll connect your two points to create your lines. All three lines should meet in the center where your knot was originally located.
once your lines are in and all connected, take your protractor, measure the angle between each set of vectors. Record that angle down on the paper. Again, ask yourself, what should all three of those angles add up to? If they do not add up to that number, double check your work and see why they don't. Once you've done so, you're ready to take your small paper, use your scale, and transfer it to a larger piece of paper. Once you've actually drawn out your vectors and your angles and labeled them with their forces, it's time to transfer this work onto a large sheet of paper. The way you're going to do that is you're going to need to create a scale. That scale needs to relate newtons to centimeters. What we need to do, the only rule, is that the shortest or smallest force needs to be at least 10 centimeters long. So, over here we have a 4 newton vector. This vector down here, vector C, needs to be at least 10 centimeters long. It's going to be up to you to figure out what scale you're going to need to make sure that you can get that vector to be at least 10 centimeters long. So, to do so, you'll need to use some factor label. By simply multiplying the original force by your centimeter to newton ratio that you've chosen, you should be able to figure out how long exactly each vector should be. In this case, we've chosen 3 centimeters per newton because 3 times 4 gets me a 12 centimeter vector. Once you've used your scale to convert your vectors over to centimeters, you need to go ahead and get those down, get those vectors down on your page. Make sure you notice how we've done this here. We've taken our two shortest vectors and made them one color, and our third longest vector is its own color. We've also labeled each vector with its force value and its length in centimeters. Finally, when you get these done on your page, you're going to need to make sure you line everything up so that it actually fits on your paper. Common mistake students make here is that they make their vectors far too long and they actually go over the edges of the paper and that's a huge mistake and it needs to be redone. Also graphs that are very very small and don't use all of the paper need to be redone as well. So please make sure you pick a scale and line your vectors so that they do use the paper fully but don't go actually over the edges. Once you've also found your scale please make sure that does get written on your page. Then, once you've drawn all your vectors in, you're going to use the parallelogram method to take your two smaller vectors and redraw them, each with the same magnitude and direction, again, but tip to tail, so that we can find the resultant of our two smaller vectors. Again, you can see that vector C was redrawn up here, parallel to the original vector C, same direction, same magnitude. You can see over here we took vector A, redrew it with the same magnitude and the same direction, just simply lined up tip to tail with C, and the repeat of C was drawn tip to tail with A. It should be evident that the resultant should go from our very start of our two smaller vectors to the end of our two smaller vectors using the parallelogram method. Once this is done, we're going to check our measurements to see how we did. You should notice that we have one angle here made between vectors B and, C, B and A, rather, and we have another angle here made between our resultant and vector A. If we added theta1 and theta resultants together, we should expect to see a very specific angle measure. Do you know what it is? In all reality, though, you'll get something that looks like this, where your theta1 and your theta resultant will add up to something other than that magic number we're looking for. And that's okay, but we're going to have to account for it. Once you actually measure your resultant in centimeters, you'll need to convert it back into newtons. That will give us the magnitude of that vector. You'll also need to measure the angle of the resultant and compare it to what you think you were supposed to get. Once you've done that, you're going to perform an error analysis and for each value of the theta of the resultant and for the magnitude of the resultant. Actual being what we measured on the piece of paper, theoretical is what we know that it should in fact be um, based on our knowledge of forces 
and vectors. Please show work for both. That includes writing your equation, plugging in, solving, and showing the answer.